Now we're leaving the Netherlands. Bye, Netherlands. We wave, and they're all waving. They got huge pit stains underneath their shirts because they just can't stop running these tests. We're coming to America. Most specifically, we're coming to the states bordering Lake Michigan. And some of them, my geography is not all that good, but we're in that general area. So you might be like, that state's not near Lake Michigan. We're in that general area. Just go with me on this. Because this creature doesn't really care about boundaries, doesn't really care about state lines. And I think it's interesting, because a lot of times we talk about cryptids in the forest, a lot of times you talk about cryptids in the jungle, cryptids in the desert, but what about a cryptid in the air? Not a lot of them. find them fascinating. 1969. We're in the town of Rolling Prairie, which is an oxymoron, Rolling Prairie, Indiana. There's a family living in a trailer. Unnamed family, by the way. Actually, it might be named. I might not just wrote it down, but anyways... This family's living in a trailer. A recent storm ripped a hole in the roof of the trailer. So, it's... <laughs> I don't know why people live... I, if, I don't mind people living in trailers. I think that's totally fine. But I don't understand why you live in a trailer in Tornado Alley. Or anywhere where there's any sort of high wind. But anyway, so these people are living in a trailer. In a place where wind can rip the roof off your house at any moment. And they haven't gotten it fixed yet. Probably never will. So they put a blue tarp over the hole. And now this is a sizable hole. It's not like a little, like, oh, look it, I can see the sunlight. It's like, oh, look, I can see the entire sun and the flames shooting off the side of it from my living room. So anyways, there's this giant hole in their roof. They cover it up with a blue tarp, which would be, how do you sleep with that? Every night it'd be like, plus the bugs. But anyways, they're sleeping in their trailer, blue tarp covering up the hole. Mom, dad, grandma... Little boy, little girl, all living in this trailer. I'm sure it was a double white. One night, the boy's sleeping. <laughs> the can't sleep because the tarp keeps hitting the top. The wind's just driving him nuts. Little boy. Parents are asleep. Baby sister's asleep. Grandma's asleep. So the little boy's sharing a bedroom with his baby sister. So her crib's in the bedroom. He's laying in bed. <laughs> Here's the tarp. <laughs> Doesn't hear the tarp anymore. Just laying in bed, wide awake. The sound that was keeping him awake is now absent, and he finds it a little more terrifying. And then he smells something. Not terror sweat, not happy sweat. Something beast-like. Something old and wet and inhuman. He rolls over in his bed, looking towards his sister's crib. And that's when he sees it, standing in the darkness. He described it as seven to eight feet tall, covered everywhere in hair. Huge, leathery wings. Attached to its back. Massive arms and legs, skinny little torso. Kind of looked like a moth would if he was hitting the gym. He described, this I thought was, so that description in and of itself, you're like, it's kind of like a big old bat. Like a muscular bat. Bat who doesn't skip leg day. But when he described the tiny little torso. And the way he describes it, I thought was chilling. He says it looked like a human, the the torso and the head looked like a human skeleton with sharp teeth. But the sound it made. And I don't know if that's the actual sound it made. But he described it as a low garbled sound. He's in this room. He immediately begins screaming. And his grandma runs into the room. The creature then turns to the boy, picks him up in these huge, powerful arms, and starts running through the trailer and shoots out the top of the the roof. Shoots out through the hole. Grandma's screaming. Parents? Dead asleep. What's weird is that there's a gap in the story at this point. Where the boy says he survived to tell the tale. He says, the next thing I know, I was on the roof of the trailer. Out in the cold. The parents said, we woke up because we heard something loud hit the roof of the trailer. They jumped up and they found their son on the top of the trailer. Unconscious. The grandma said, a giant bat just flew out of here. Like, just picked up your son, my grandson, which obviously, but grabbed the kid, ran, and took off. And the boy was up there. So you had two witnesses. You had the grandma and the boy who both saw this creature. Now... They didn't call the cops, which is a little suspicious. 
but I'm wondering if there was something else going on in that trailer. Drinking or something like that, or drug use. You're going to call the cops if a giant bat tries to steal your kid. You're going to call the cops if a tiny bat tries to steal your kid. But they didn't call the cops. This story only came to light years and years later when he told this story. So there's a little bit of a suspect to it. He could just be making it up and saying, oh yeah, my grandma saw it. And they're like, oh, can we interview her? And they're like, nah, she's dead. But he tells the story later. Now, this is what I thought was funny. Other than the child abduction by a giant man bat. He had this horrible experience as a kid. He didn't forget about it. He remembered it all of his life. And then the movie The Mothman Chronicles came out, starring Richard Gere. It came out like in the late 2000s. And he goes to see it. Now, generally, if you get if you get mugged, you're not going to go watch Menace to Society when it comes out. You're going to be like, nah, I'm good. I don't need to see that. But he goes to he gets abducted by a man bat. And then he goes to watch The Mothman Chronicles. And he ran out of the theater. He got totally scared. And then they have this quote in this article. He literally had to leave during the scene where the Mothman caused the automobile crash and death. He has not attempted to watch the film since then. No, duh. Really, dude, why does this article have to add that last sentence? Of course he doesn't want to watch it again. He got abducted by a Mothman-type creature. But anyways, it felt they felt the need to include that quote, like he has not watched the film since. Of course he hasn't. Of course he hasn't. Again, you go through a traumatic event. You're not going to be like, hey, what do you want to watch? I don't know. Let's watch Irreversible. Like, you're just going to stay away from movies that replicate the crime that you are a part of, that you are a victim of. So anyways, I don't, that's not really notable, but they wanted to notate it on this website. So I read that story and I was like, that's probably not true. I've never, I've been in a lot of trailers in my life. I've never found one that an eight-foot-tall creature could walk through naturally. I've never found one that really anyone over six feet tall could walk through naturally. I've never... I don't think they could support the weight of a creature that was eight feet tall running around. I think the fact that he... They dropped him on the roof was bizarre. Like, there was a lot of stuff... The parents not waking up. The theory was that the creature hypnotized them. Then why wasn't the grandma hypnotized? Why wasn't he hypnotized? So the story didn't really... I was like, I read it and I was kind of like, uh, I don't think it's true. Then I decided to look up some more stuff. In the Lake Michigan area, in that whole general area of the United States, what are those states called? We have the West Coast and the South and the East Coast, and then we have the Northwest, then we have Central America. Wait, no, no, that's that's a different place. But you know what I mean? Like we, the Great Lakes area? Lake, anyway, so that whole area up there, there's been a lot of sightings of a man-bat creature, or sometimes it's described as a giant insect-like creature, which I think this one, even though he was giant and furry, I think the tiny body makes it does seem kind of insectoid. But I start looking through these different incidents, and I was like, oh, these people see it flying through here, and these people, and I was like, oh, that could probably be explained. It could probably just be a big old bug. And I keep looking, and it's, oh, at a certain point, I'm, I'm trying to find nothing, because I had already made my mind up that this story was fake. And I still, I'm not 100% on it, but I kept finding, sighting after sighting after sighting after sighting of these creatures. To the point, in 2017, in 2017 alone, in the city, in just the city of Chicago, 29 sightings of a man-bat creature by dozens of witnesses. Police officers, news reporters, people just walking down the street. They saw one jumping off of the Sears Tower, like doing a swan dive and then fly through the city. People had seen them on the outskirts of Chicago. People have seen them within the streets of Chicago flying around. Reports of them shape-shifting, of seeing humans all of a sudden growing wings and taking off and flying off into the city. Report after report after report. And at a certain point, there have been times where a Bigfoot has been sighted in an area and then all of a sudden there's a ton of Bigfoot sightings and you have to go, those are probably fake. Like either that original person was the first person to see Bigfoot in the area or everyone else now is mistaking everything for Bigfoot. But these man-bat sightings aren't super publicized. It's not like one person sees the man-bat and is all over the news. This 1969 story is way too far back for it to be a viral sensation. People, ordinary people, are seen, just in the city of Chicago, 29 times. A giant, bigger than a human, flying creature going through the city. Absolutely bizarre. And I think it's interesting because when we think of cryptids, they're hidden. 
They're, like I was saying in my intro, they're deep in remote areas. Very rarely do you have, almost never do you have cryptids in super inhabited areas. Could be fake. Could just be a lot of people thinking that they're seeing a giant flying guy. But if it's real, if this is a real cryptid, what's interesting about this story is that you know how we build houses and we start to encroach on the natural habitat of mountain lions. And then mountain to lions start walking. We had a mountain lion walking through the city of Hood River a couple months ago. Or cougar or whatever. Whatever the difference was. I think it was mountain lion. But anyways, it was walking by an elementary school. Because humanity keeps encroaching on their territory. And they're like, well, then screw it. If I can't find food out here, I'm going to go in your neighborhood and find some food. What if the same thing is going to happen with cryptids? What if as we spread out and start knocking down their natural habitat, they start coming to where we're at? We cut down enough force and eventually Bigfoot's like, this sucks. Can't find any more fish. Can't eat any more deer. I'm just going to go into this neighborhood. What happens when we start building apartment buildings where the melon heads live? And they're just like, ah, they're trying to apply for a loan. They all just stack up on each other wearing a trench coat, filling out paperwork. That's one scenario. That's one scenario. That we're basically cutting into their environment. So we're going to be seeing more and more cryptids in the cities. And in the suburbs. But there's another theory as well. What if the man bat, if it exists, let's assume that it exists for a second. What if the man bat says, hmm, my species have always lived in the wilderness. And we've always hunted lone stragglers. People lost in the woods that disappear. Hitchhikers on a dark stretch of night looking for a ride, they disappear. Small family picnicking. One kid goes running off, never find the kid again. And that has satiated my species for a long time. But now is the time to no longer just eat. Now is the time to feast. Now is the time to hunt humans where I know there's a lot of them. And you have this creature patrolling the skies of Chicago, looking for its next meal. A hiker goes missing in the middle of the woods. People are going to go looking for him. A young prostitute disappears in the streets of Chicago. They're going to look for her, but at a certain point, they're just going to figure the city swallowed her up. It's far easier to feed on prey in a city where people easily just disappear. That was a clip from our daily podcast, Dead Rabbit Radio. Dead Rabbit Radio is available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. It's daily paranormal, conspiracy, and true crime news. If you want to hear the full episode that this clip came from, check the link below. Please like and subscribe. And hit that little bell, too. That does some magical stuff. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.